Jazz here with a special video for you today. It is about Christmas knitting. And this is not gift knitting. This is garment knitting. It's things that you can wear knitting. <laughs> and I realized I've never made a dedicated video on all of my Christmas patterns. I have individual videos for the patterns that I have finished over the years, but I thought, why not just put them all together so you can see everything and hopefully gain some inspiration for any Christmas or holiday knitting you want to do this season of 2020. I know we're not going anywhere, but it's okay. We can still honor the season by knitting for the season. So here we go. I want to start off with a few of my own patterns. Since I love Christmas knitting, I have a few patterns that I have made myself. And then I think we'll go, we'll hop around in certain categories. So even though I'm going to focus mostly on garments today, I do want to show you some of my stockings. So I do have a stocking pattern. It's called chunky stocking and it's called chunky stocking for the knit version and also for the crochet version. So this is one of the knitted versions and it's called chunky because they knit up so quickly using really chunky yarn. Here is, I think this is a combination of a lion brand that may or may not even be in existence anymore. And then it looks like this is an alpaca held double with a sparkly base. So this is the knitted version and I actually have a few different ones. So this one is with hedgehog chubby, which I love with the tassels. I think it's so cute. This one is made up of Asylum Fibers, her bulky base. And then I also have, here's a few other knit versions. Here's a knitted version. It's really fun because you can combine three colors together to make a fun little heathered or I guess it's marled fabric and the pom-pom is everything. And then I do have a crochet version as well. So here's one example of the crochet version because you don't want to leave the crochet the crochet out this is crochet and you can see lots of different versions on my projects page not only that i have made but others have made and it really is a quick knit crochet and just so much fun to make over the holidays and they look they look really cute when you group them all together on a little mantle piece or just a little collection and they're hardy you can stuff these stockings so that is the first pattern that I wanted to touch on. And the second is called Choose Your Own Adventure Christmas Cowl. And it's called Choose Your Own Adventure because there are different motifs that you can choose from. So here I have the star and the reindeer and the tree and the heart. And then there's a variety of in-between border patterns that you can choose from as well. This one is knit up in a naturally dyed wool that I got at the New York Sheep and Wool Festival. And it's just very unapologetically Christmassy with the red and the green. I've also made one with just hearts and that is really good for the Valentine's Day season. And you could also knit this up with just like trees and do let's say cream and green or green and white or green and black or something like that. Really it's anything you want. So check that pattern out as well. Choose your own adventure Christmas cowl. Okay, let's stay in cowl land for a while. This is the Sophia cowl, cowl by Clinton Hill Cashmere. And I made one modification on it by adding a seam. So her cowl has all the ribbing the same, but I just in the middle offset the ribbing so that there's just a little seam there in the middle just for interest. And I wear this on repeat all holiday season. I love it so much. She's right, it doesn't pill. I've had it since I had short hair, which means, let's see, I think I've had it for three years. I wear it every season, everywhere. It's so comforting, so warm. And if you want to dive into cashmere, it's a high price point cashmere, and it's so perfect, and you will love it. This is my hipster shawl by Hohi Locatelli, and this is made of giggling gecko yarns. I don't remember the exact name of the color, but it's definitely like a lipstick red. And it has a really fun little stitch here that I had never done before. You can see it kind of crosses over there. And I wasn't specifically knitting this to be a Christmas shawl, but because it's bright red, it kind of is perfect for the season. It's DK weight, so it's just so easy to wear inside, outside, all the places, and it knits up fairly quickly. I love it in this red. I think it would look so cool in a bright green. And then of course, sort of a cream with a sparkle in it. It would really, really go with all of your holiday outfits. This is one that I did last 
Christmas 2019 and I saved the finished object video until this Christmas so I've been sitting on it a long time it's rainbow warrior and it is by Casa Pinka and this yarn I think oh gosh I'm sure I said what it was in the video I can't remember it right now I sort of feel like it was Madeline Tosh and it was very unapologetically Christmas and sparkle so one skein was very pigmented red and green and the other was more of a cream with the speckles and they perfectly complement each other so this one is fingering weight which means it takes a little longer to knit up but it also means it's really wearable inside so you can just pop it on as your outfit and be really cozy and stylish inside outside everywhere you go and it's originally i think i called it christmas warrior but I believe the pattern is called Rainbow Warrior. I just made it Christmas Warrior. That's that for cowl, shawl, wrap category. Now let's move on to hats. One thing I've noticed about myself is as the holiday season progresses, it sort of starts out a little stressful and then it progresses into manageable, relaxing time once all of the stress is over. And I find myself wanting to knit something really close to the holiday and this is an example of that. I just got a bee in my bonnet that I wanted to make this. It's the True North Toque or Toque. I never say it right. It's by Made by Marley. And I remember distinctly going to Nitty City and also Pearl Soho to get just the right yarn to make this hat and then a pink version, which I don't have here. But this is such a cute, cute hat so beautiful and there's a crochet version out there of this as well i'm a big fan of the buffalo check so this knitted hat was so much fun to make and to wear and to gift it's a very quick knit it's all about finding the right shades of yarn the story behind this hat is I went, so Michelle Wong, who used to live in New York City, she had a pop-up shop, shop called Gage Intention, and it was at Brooklyn Craft Company, and she had a lot of plucky yarn, and this green is plucky cashmere, and I remember feeling really down and going to this Gage Intention pop-up shop and purchasing a single skein of green cashmere, which was very expensive and kind of ridiculous because I had no idea what I was going to make with it, but I knew it had to be special. So when I found the pattern, which is called Blitzen by Ursi, E-R-S-S-I-E, -S -S -I, -E, I knew I wanted to use my cashmere. So I went on Etsy and I found some more cashmere. It said it was called Sparkle Cashmere. It's not as soft as the plucky, but is any cashmere? I think Clinton Hill is about as soft as the plucky. And so this has sparkles in it. This red is also the cashmere. And then I use the red to make these little Rudolph noses. And I really feel that this is a special way to use my green cashmere. And I love this as a very Christmas hat. That's Blitzen by Ursi. This is called Kodiak Kisses. And I used the pink and the gray Clinton Hill cashmere for this one. So it's called Kodiak because of the bears, see, in the color work. And this is so warm and so soft. And this is more of a winter hat, but it does have the little Christmas tree, so I wanted to mention it. And I also want to mention a hat that I no longer have. So I actually made two reindeer hats. And it's called Reindeer Hat by Margot Sapoti. And it's such a fun, she's from the Warriors. I hope I said her last name right. It's such a fun knit. It's a great stash buster and a great way to use your imagination. I ended up sending them to my nieces so I don't have them to show you here but that was so much fun to make back in 2019 last Christmas. I had this idea back when I was crocheting more often that I wanted to make a crazy crochet afghan and I made all of these different patches and the idea it was that I was going to sort of piece them all together eventually. All different sizes, all different motifs. I collected all of these different patterns and also yarns. So I ended up destashing that on an eBay destash because I just lost seam on it. But I had made this hat with some of the yarns. So just collect any bright green, bright red, sparkly specialty yarn and just hold them all together in different ways to make this hat. This is a hat I make all the time it's from Pearl Soho, it's free. It's called the Kids Fun Hat, and they have the kids size and the adult size, and I love this hat so much. You can really have fun with the pom-pom too. I think a multicolored pom-pom would have been really fun in this piece. This is another color work hat. It's called the Oh Dear Hat by Drops Design, 
And a friend gifted me this beautiful sparkling finger fingering weight yarn. I think it was, might have been even Anzula. And then I had this gorgeous, I think it was alpaca from Lion Brand. So I combined the two together to make a colorwork hat of reindeer. And this is another one I love to wear. Sometimes in the Christmas holiday months, sometimes more in January as like a wintry hat. But it was a really fun way to begin my color work journey. I hadn't done much color work before I did this hat and I love it. When the girls were smaller, we used to do the Jingle Bell Jog in Brooklyn every season. So it's a fun way to run as a family. I think it's just a 5K and everyone gathers in Prospect Park and wears their craziest Christmassy running gear. And one year I made them leg warmers, which I don't have, with just red and green and cream color and then I made them these hats out of this amazing I don't even know what it was called but I think it was the Martha Stewart brand of yarn at Lion Brand so it is full eyelash full sparkle yarn and I don't even know what pattern I used but I just had to show it because I love it because it kind of feels like a wig 70s shag elfy crazy hat and I just can't part with it. I know I made two but one probably got too small but this one still fits an adult head and it's actually warm and soft. It doesn't seem like it would be but we really do need to consider bringing the eyelash back because this is so epic. Okay that's it for hats but since we were just talking about reindeer I wanted to mention this necklace that I have, I love Mochi Mochi World, and this pattern is called Tiny Reindeer by Anna, and I can't say her last name. It's H-R-A-C-H-O-V-E-C, but she is, I'm sure you've seen that little meme of the gnome, the knitted gnome knitting a heart that like goes up into the air, and she has these books, and she's been on my channel. So this is her Tiny Reindeer pattern, and I of course made it Rudolph with the red nose. And I love making her little mochi mochis and making them into necklaces. So you just get this ball chain and it's pretty inexpensive. I get it at a place called Toho Shoji in New York City. It's across from Bryant Park. They have all the colors and I just snip how much I want and get a little connector. And now I have a special knitted friend necklace. All right, let's move on to sweaters. A few years ago, Andrea was making bundle up Bettys and she sent me a bundle up Betty with an ugly Christmas sweater. And I loved her sweater so much that I decided to make my own version. Gosh, what happened to bundle up Betty in the sweater? I think I must have given it away. So I decided, I just hurried and I purchased the, the tough, mm, the very bulky yarn from Knit Picks. It's called, I feel like the word tough is in it. And so here it is. And I just imitated uh, her sweater. I'm sure I have a video about this sweater somewhere. I don't remember all the details on making it. I was then invited to an ugly Christmas sweater party. So I took, I took the base of this sweater, which I already had, which had the pom-poms and the tree. And I added a garland that I store-bought from Target and I added lights. So these lights are on and flashing right now. I think you can see them. And they're battery operated. And this is probably the third year that these batteries have lasted. So it's so cool and epic that it has the candy cane striped sleeves and then these lights. So I just show you this. There isn't a pattern out there that I know of. I probably referenced one. Again, look for the video in my finished objects playlist. Actually, I should make a playlist with just Christmas sweaters, which I will. I'll link to it underneath here. But this is just to show you how you can get fun making your own ugly Christmas sweater because right now, ugly Christmas sweaters, it feels like it's just something that you buy, but we can make them too. And they don't have to be ugly. I mean, is this ugly? What makes an ugly Christmas sweater? So many questions that need to be answered. Some people design sweaters that are meant to be for Christmas. So I'm gonna show you a few of those next. One is called Christmas in July. And this is by Tennis Lavalli. I hope I said her last name right. This is Christmas in July. And I used all the Rauma that I got in Norway. So it's kind of epic. And I did choose rainbow, but I also specifically chose this dark green. So it did have a Christmas feel to it. And I love this sweater so much it's so pretty and I think the yoke is just very like ski sweater very winter sportsy even though Christmas in July is the title and it is also bright 
So this is one that is specifically for Christmas that I actually knit not at Christmas time, but I plan on wearing it during the Christmas season. And then we have this one by Poison Girls, which is so awesome. Betty and Judy Lodge sweater. So I'm a huge fan of White Christmas. And Amy of Poison Girls, she does all these retro knits. And I knew I wanted to knit this when I went to Paris in the fall. So I specifically purchased yarn at a beautiful Paris yarn shop to make this. And I've seen so many different versions of how this is handled. This is exactly as the pattern states it should be handled. But you can actually really riff on this and make all kinds of themes and treat it any way you want. So I love this sweater because it's form fitting and it's cropped and it's so festive and so easy to dress up. I love it. This one is called Jewel Grand by Andy Satterland. This actually, I think, was a Christmas Eve cast on for me. I feel like I cast it on on Christmas Eve. And I used this awesome Asylum Fibers sort of minty yarn that I got at String Thing Studio in Brooklyn. Can you see the tree? I'm trying to hold it at an angle so you can see the tree. And it is, I don't know if it's meant to have a cropped sleeve or not, maybe three quarter. But I went with cropped because I just wanted it to be done. And it is nice for layering, especially if it is hot, you know, the heat's on up high, you can sort of layer it underneath a, an overcoat or something. And I've seen different versions of how the tree is decked out or not. I chose to put a little angel pin on the top of mine that was in my grandma's brooch collection. And I just love that I paired this very vintage sort of traditional design with this minty green. It makes me happy and I like the combination with a classic tartan red, like in the pant or the skirt. Now I want to veer off into Christmas knits that didn't start as Christmas knits. So I've knit the Soul Dot in a Crop by Boyland Knitworks three times now. And the third one I did was a Christmas version of the Soul Dotna. I picked out the green and red and cream at Mermaid's Pearl and then I knew I needed a fourth color so I chose the signature color at the Mermaid's Pearl yarn shop as this sort of turquoise color because I think red and turquoise go really well together. And again, I like to think of just a little twist to the holidays to make it more fun. And I haven't owned this sweater very long, so I'm actually looking forward to incorporating it into my Christmas wardrobe this year. But especially a DK weight color work sweater flies off the needles. And I just want to encourage you to look at various color work sweaters that you have maybe on your to-do list and seeing how you can give it a Christmas or any holiday twist. I actually have been working on recently a, a paletta, a second paletta by Boylan Networks that has like an autumnal theme to it. And I love approaching knits that way. And then finally, I have the Camellia Tank by Karen Templar. This is using Knit Collage Spun Cloud and she doesn't, I don't think she makes this color anymore. So this is a green that was on a sale rack in a local yarn shop and I swooped it up, just two skeins and I was able to make this amazing vest. And it's so puffy and fun because again, going back to the layering, you can wear this and still put a coat over it. And the sparkle in the spun cloud, the gold and the silver is so Christmassy. So this combination is just, it just screams Christmas to me and you can wear lots of plaid shirts underneath it and it's so much fun. Before I go, I wanted to show you a few options for Christmas knitting that I have in my own stash that may inspire you to either dig into your to your stash or maybe you'll see them on my channel coming up soon if I can get my act together with knitting. My act's always together with knitting. First I wanted to point out the unique sock. This is a sock kit. This is what the sock will look like. I need a pair of hand knit Christmas socks. That's what's missing from this capsule is socks. So this is Christmas Limited Edition by EarthYarns.com and made in Turkey. And what's cool about these socks is when you purchase this yarn, a tree is planted. And then look at this on the side. It says hashtag knit one, plant one, share a picture of your socks finished or in progress using hashtag knit one, plant one, and we will plant an additional tree for every post. Isn't that cool? So you're doing something good for the environment and for your feet. I also have these gorgeous skeins that Skein Cocaine sent me last season that I haven't knit yet. One is Crushed Candy Cane and one is Home for the Holidays. These are both Erin Weight 
indie dyed skeins and I think these would make awesome pull the wool over hats mixed with a strand of mohair. So I just love it when the dyers do their Christmas dye job. It's a lot of fun. For those of you who get mini advent calendars, I do have a video about what to do with your minis and I will link to that underneath this video as well. Okay, last season I was, <laughs> I picked out my Christmas hat. It's called Shift Along by Andrew Mowry. And I even have a really cool pom-pom to go with it. It's like this Grinchy lime green to go with these two spin cycle yarns here. And I started swatching it up, but I think that my gauge is way off. So I abandoned the project. But this is what, in theory, this is what the hat will look like. And it will look, you know, more interesting as it shifts along. <laughs> but I was so frustrated that my gauge was so bad that I, I put it down. But I, I am excited about having these two spin cycle colors that are Christmas colors. So I've got to make something with them. And then I have, I have three skeins of fingering weight yarn that's called Mars in Retrograde but I love the pink and the red sparkle happening here and to me it would make a really fun untraditional type of Christmas sweater as a possible this could also be like kind of a Valentine sweater too maybe a love notes is that fingering weight or maybe a ranunculus and then I want to point out something that I observed when I was in Scandinavia this was a few years ago and I noticed a lot of sweaters having a little finishing touch on the cuff or the collar with just one or two rows of metallic. I picked up a few of these yarns to maybe do that someday. So this is Twilly's washable gold fingering metal metallized polyester. It also has viscose. So this is a very metallic, almost a crochet thread. And then this one I got um, at the Knitting Cove on Long Island, Peria Knight. And this is a very metallic red. So think about incorporating these in your color work yokes or on your cuffs. You could even make knitted jewelry with it. Very fun. If you don't do, if you don't allow yourself sparkles throughout the year, now's the time to do it. Okay, finally, I wanna show you my, hopefully, I'm not, I'm shooting this before I cast this on. So I'm hoping that I'm well into it by the time you see this video. Maybe I won't be. This year I received a very special skein of Angora from the bunnies, Jessica's Rabbits in Brooklyn. And I knew I wanted to build a sweater around it and I thought this is so snowy and wintry that I want to make this year's 2020 Christmas sweater around this skein of Angora. Look at it, it glows. It literally glows. I picked out a sweater called Speckles and Spice Top by Tammy Gore. It is a short sleeved DK weight sweater. So I don't know if I'll end up doing it short sleeved or add a sleeve. It's so perfect because, because the yoke is very, very color work, which will go by fast for me. And there's this one part of the motif that's really thick, like a thick chevron. So I'd love to highlight the Angora in that portion of the pattern. And then I thought, because it's so fuzzy and like white and snowy, I thought of Shabby Chic Christmas. So if you have followed Shabby Chic or Rachel Ashwell in the past, her colors are like muted pastel -y. So I went on home, I thought, who would have that yarn? And I thought of Homespun House. So. She had this collection of non-superwash DK, which I was pretty excited about. Non-superwash merino DK, because superwash ends up growing and being weird sometimes. And you know, the chemical process that goes through making superwash is not the best. So if we can go non-superwash, that's good. So these are her colors and I can say the names of them. Let's see. We have Penny, Tool Skirt, Juniper, aloe and oatmeal so I'm not sure which combination of these I'm going to use this is definitely the body because I have three skeins of this juniper but then the yoke will be these guys in some combination I may leave one out so this is my shabby chic Christmas sweater I'm so excited about it and she also sent along this mini skein pack inspired by the sweater so you can see all of the colors of my sweater in there plus a few additional colors that make it extra holiday-ish, which all of these colors would make an amazing Christmas sweater. That's it. That's what I've got for you. It seems like a lot. 
I think I really love Christmas knitting and I know a lot of people do Christmas Eve cast-ons and they really go for it. So I wanted to share that with you in case you were looking for a little inspiration this holiday season and tell me down below. I'd love to hear what are you casting on and what are you knitting on for Christmas 2020? I want to see. Thank you as always for checking in here on Christy Glass Knits and I'll see you next time. Bye. So, Louise, I will knit you a Christmas sweater too. Don't you worry.